Good morning, my little nerds, or shall I say good evening, as I am filming this quite late, but I wanted to do a follow-up video to my last week's episode of my melasma journey because I read all of your questions and all of your comments, and I thought it would only be fitting that we follow it up with how to help yourself. Tips and tricks to battle not just melasma, but also hyperpigmentation. So without further ado, let's jump in. But before we jump in, I am Dr. Shereen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based here in New York City. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we do this every Saturday morning. And please do not forget to subscribe, comment, and like the video below. Also, if you guys head over to www.pillowtalkderm.com, you guys can sign up for our newsletter. I promise we will not inundate your inbox, but you guys will keep up to date with all of the latest blog posts, uh, educational information, and any announcement that may or may not come your way. So now that I'm done with my infomercial, vamos, vamos, vamos. Hyperpigmentation is a big one. I heard all of you guys. I read your messages. I saw everything that you wrote below. So before we actually jump in to hyperpigmentation and what are the best tips and tricks, number one thing that you need to understand is that anybody, no matter your skin tone, whether you are fair as fair can be or dark as dark can be or anything in between, can still suffer from hyperpigmentation. I mean, I have seen this in the darkest of skin types where they even manage to look blotchy because some of their patches are darker than others and it gives off an irregularity in their appearance. Now, it's needless to say, if you're extremely fair, that patchiness is even more pronounced, but it don't underestimate a little tiny millimeter of shadowing, even on darker skin types, because it can make people look ruddy overall. And that's why I think evening out your pigmentation, evening out your skin tone is key. And number one reason why people get hyperpigmentation or their melasma gets triggered is le soleil, the sun. And this is a light that is way too bright. Do not underestimate the negative impact of the sun on your appearance. Now, if it's not for your health sake, meaning if you don't care that you might get skin cancer because you're young and ignorant and blissful and skin cancer is the last thing on your mind, then do it for vanity's sake. Avoid the sun. Now, I'm not like the anti-sun, like, uh, but because people like to portray either you're like, I'm going to go lay nude in the sun and show my private parts and just like let everything absorb the rays of the sun or you're like complete maniac who's like fully covered from top to bottom wanting to avoid the sun now there's a healthy medium in between a little bit of sun is obviously healthy but sun protection sunscreen is not going to minimize your vitamin d production sunscreen is not going to give you a uh, long-term illnesses. Sunscreen is basically just protecting your skin from the rays of the sun that cause not just sun damage that can lead to skin cancer, but also that can lead to premature aging. Because 80% of premature aging, yes, is caused by the sun. And the damage is really due, happens before we're even 20 years old. So take it from me, do not do it. I will show you guys one day a scan of my skin. Uh, I've worked very hard on um, but it doesn't look good underneath uh, that UV camera. So that is that. And then why else people get hyperpigmentation? We touched on melasma. We don't need to go hit that one again because there's a whole video if you just scroll back just to the one before this one on melasma. And post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is another one, is a third one, which is when you have inflammatory lesions, whether it's eczema, acne, psoriasis, um, an irritation, an allergic reaction, a cut, a scratch, a burn, all of that can lead to inflammation and inflammation can trigger pigmentation and i did not do that on purpose to rhyme but it can and so when things are inflamed you want to try to minimize how long that inflammation persists on your skin plus you need to avoid the sun while you're actively inflamed because those spots can turn darker longer not fun and so definitely you need to address the underlying issues of why you have the hyperpigmentation, why you have the discoloration. And that is tip number one. Definitely, before we jump into investing time, effort, energy, and money into the over-the-counter products, 
Understand what is triggering your hyperpigmentation. Is it from old sun damage? Is it from an acne breakout? Is it from active inflammation? Or is it melasma? Or medications you may or may not be on? Or underlying medical conditions like Addison's disease? So all of these different things can lead to hyperpigmentation. So that's why it's very important that you take the time to figure out what's causing the hyperpigmentation. And if you can't figure it out, by all means, go see your board certified dermatologist so that they can help you figure it out. Because otherwise you might be spending a fortune on skincare products that ultimately are doing nothing for you. You're like a sinking ship. You have a hole on one side of your ship and yet you're on the other side of your ship trying to get the water out. But the, the ship's still gonna sink because you're not patching the hole, okay? That's the best analogy I can come up with. So tip number one, take care of your underlying issue. Tip number two, and I hit upon this when I first started this video, sun, 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 sun. Not just sunscreen, but you want broad spectrum sunscreen. Sunscreen's covering for both UVA and UVB, all right? Because UVA is what causes the aging element of sun damage. UVB is what gives you the burns and the um, skin cancer. I often get asked, does it matter if it's physical or chemical? What only matters is that you're actually using it. I don't care if it's physical or chemical, to be very honest with you. Personally, I like the physical ones because I have extremely sensitive eyes. Um, it's been very hard for me to try to find a sunscreen, at least in the US, that is a chemical sunscreen that does not irritate my eyes. I was recently introduced to this Korean sunscreen, which I am obsessed with, Hold. Called the Beauty of Joshan. It is a rice and probiotic sunscreen and it is SPF 50 and it goes on seamlessly and I have yet to date uh, to experience any sort of irritation on it. I think in the US you can get it from a website called Stylevana. I still don't understand how it's legally accepted to actually sell this. It's such a nice sunscreen. It's like a lightweight moisturizer, but um, I don't know how it's legally allowed, but whatever, I'm going, <laughs> I might be buying it from that website. Just saying. Um, I will have to figure out though, and once I understand how they're able to sell sunscreens from Korea in the US without having drug fact labels on those sunscreens, uh, bypassing the FDA, I will let you know. So sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Protect, protect, protect before you decide to project. I just made that up. And definitely invest in UPF. So on Amazon, and I'll try to link it, I have like a bunch of rash guards that I buy in different colors, red, white, blue, black, whatever, basic colors. And when I'm at the beach or anything, I take two of them. So once I jump in, I'll wear one. Once I come out and I'm wet, I'll take it off and I'll switch it. Um, but when I'm outside, if I'm in the garden, I'm playing with the kids, I'll always wear it because I definitely want to protect my neck and chest. Also, I also have a visor. Why? Because visors have much more protection. It's a larger radius uh, or diameter radius. <laughs> Ding, math. Um, radius. And also, I don't overheat wearing the visor because with a baseball cap, I definitely overheat. With a sun hat, I overheat. But also, the baseball cap literally just covers the top third of your hat, head. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's quite late and I am hyper. So, definitely, sun protection is number two. Now, tip number three is. When you have inflammatory lesions on your face, i.e. acne, or you have a burn, or you have a cut, or you have some sort of inflammatory process, do not pick at your skin. The further you traumatize and irritate your skin, the worse the residual hyperpigmentation is gonna be. Plus, if you have active acne and you're out in the sun, that pigment will linger longer. So definitely do not pick, do not irritate, do not rub, and do not sit out in the sun when you have active inflammation. All right? Huge, 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 huge one. I see a lot of people who are self-inflicting spots, PIH spots on their face because they're doing it to themselves and they think it's the marks that are just leaving residual brown spots behind. But when I look at them, it's very much manipulated. So please do not pick, cut your nails short if you can't help yourself, especially if you have tendencies to wanna pick or go at your skin. Tip number four is one that I hold near and dear to my corazón. Heart, coeur, and B, okay? Do not, Fear hydroquinone. 
H Y D R O Q U I N O N E because it's the gold standard. It's the mother effing gold standard, especially if you have melasma. And the reason I have such beef with you guys fearing hydroquinone is because it is based on a misunderstanding of the original studies that has been further perpetuated and been fear mongered by groups into lobbyists who are now taking it off over the counter. And the danger with this is that people are still gonna try to buy it, yet they do not have access to healthcare professionals. So where do they go? Third party sellers on Amazon, for example, or not on Amazon. And these third party sellers are selling them not pure hydroquinone, hydroquinone potentially laced with mercury. Now, mercury is a very good agent to help even out your skin tone. It will block the production of melanin, but it will also kill you. This is one that is actually toxic, okay? This is one you should avoid. But if you actually get hydroquinone from an FDA approved facility, or one that has been made by a very reputable brand under strong guidance with a drug fact label on it, then you should not fear it, okay? Especially when used under the guise of a thing dermatologist because you don't wanna be using hydroquinone on and on and on and on and on forever. Your skin will kind of build a tolerance to it and it might actually backfire on you. So you wanna use it slow and steady on and off on and off like two months on two months off okay um it's definitely one of those ingredients that can work miracles in people um, i've seen it myself firsthand and i've seen it in my patients if you are lucky you can still find some products over the counter if you are lucky ambi ambi different D-I-F-F-E-R-I-N. They have the acne stuff um, because they're adapalene, but they also have the hydroquinone one, but I can't really find it anymore. But those are two that I think of that are really great over-the-counter ones, but they're only at 2%. Prescription is 4% or higher. So again, go see your local board-certified dermatologist if you can have access to them. Other side note, hydroquinone is in certain foods. So in the studies when they're like, oh, systemic absorption of hydroquinone. First of all, they're putting this much hydroquinone in a rat, okay? No one puts that much hydroquinone all over their body. Number two, um, you actually get it from foods you eat like licorice root, broccoli, caffeine, red wine, um, among other things. Moving on to tip number, I think five. Hydroquinone though alone is great but in conjunction with other things is amazing. And for my top three picks, other than sunscreen and hydroquinone, for hyperpigmentation would be retinols. However, ding, 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 ding. If you can't tolerate the retinol and you're chronically inflamed by the retinol, just avoid it because chronic inflammation is worse than the benefit that you're gonna get from the retinol. So retinol is kind of like a half one, so I'm gonna give you three other ones. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is a great adjunct, especially underneath your sunscreen, as it helps to really boost the effects of your sunscreen. Is vitamin C alone gonna help minimize your pigmentation? Probably not. But underneath the sunscreen, it actually increases the amount of time that it takes for your skin to turn red underneath the sun. So it's really boosting the efficacy and longevity of your sunscreen, and it can help to even out your pigmentation in the long run. But I love it with azelaic acid, I also did a deep dive recently on azelaic acid. The 15% gel is stronger than the 20% cream that you get prescription. And this is why, again, percentages do not tell the whole story because the layperson will think 20% is better. But the 15%, my friends, that's where the money's at. And if you can't get a prescription, go for the 10%. Paula's Choice, for example, has a great azelaic acid booster, as does The Ordinary. Cosmetically, not so elegant because it does pill. So I use it at night when I don't give a rat's ASS if my face is flaking off next to my husband. He's married. So we're already done. Okay, so that is um, the azelaic acid. I would also say, so I said vitamin C, I said azelaic acid, and now I am torn because there's a couple more that I would like. I am a greedy little B-I-T-C-H. So <laughs> I will say niacinamide, 
at 5% can also definitely help, especially if you have an inflammatory condition. Arbutin is one of a precursor to hydroquinone. You might not want to use it if you are pregnant, like hydroquinone. The data is still iffy. No doctor in their sane mind is going to be like, hey, use hydroquinone or arbutin if you're pregnant just because of potential liabilities. They're just covering their asses, as am I. Um, but arbutin is a great one. Licorice root extract and kojic acid. All of these are beautiful, beautiful ingredients. So products I like. Timeless. I learned it from all of you guys. 20% ascorbic acid. It's very nice. It is affordable. Um, otherwise, go for the SkinCeuticals, the CE Ferulic. It is a tried and true. Those are the vitamin C products. Niacinamide, Glucier. They have their 5% niacinamide mixed with zinc. It is a very good one that also has anti-inflammatory actions because of the zinc. Um, Arbutin, you can get that one actually from the Inky List. I believe they have an Arbutin product that they sell. Um, if you're looking for a combination of a couple of these, it's unfortunately not all of them. I believe my topicals has a combination product that you can actually incorporate a little bit of all of this in that as well. So my little nerds, that is my tips and tricks and a little bit more when it comes to how can you help yourself with not just melasma, but hyperpigmentation, because an even skin tone is next to godliness. And honestly, you will save yourself a lot of headache, a lot of time, a lot of money on procedures that may not necessarily give you the most long-term effect that you may be looking for. Sometimes you just have to know how to help yourself. So I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of hyper sugar high um, pillow talk derm on this it's actually a Tuesday evening, but Saturday morning, and I will catch you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Adieu.